Today, I'm going to start by showing you the problem I wanted to solve. I want to show you how I tried to solve it and if it was a success. And then I'm going to explain it to you so you can understand it and start using this too. So yeah, let's just get started. Okay, so what you see here is me. I have fired up my RAG system so we can start asking questions about my documents. So I fed in some information about Meta's AI Llama 3, right? I asked the question, how many tokens was Llama 3 trained on? And we have the context that is pulled from the documents and we use that context to kind of answer llama 3 was pretend on 15 trillion tokens okay so far so good right and here comes kind of my problem uh, it's not a big problem right if you know what you're doing but what happens when i say what does that mean a very vague question right okay so we say that no we don't pull anything from our documents right so that means that we don't have any relevant context to this problem. So this is kind of the problem I wanted to take a look at today. How can we kind of improve this? So yeah, I'm just going to show you how I implemented a solution for this and how it works. Okay, so let's fire up the second version here. So this is the version that contains my solution. So we're going to ask the same question. How many tokens was Llama 3 trained on? Uh, this is running on the 8B Llama 3 model on Ulama, so it's totally locally, right? And you can see the Llama 3 was trained over 50 million tokens, so pretty much exactly the same answer as before. What if we say, what does that mean? So a very vague question, right? So what I implemented was this kind of rewritten query. So we take our original query and we try to rewrite it. So, can you provide more details about the improvements made in Llama 3 compared to its predecessor? Increasing training data, code size, support for non-English languages. Also, how does a tokenizer, yeah, blah, blah, blah. So, you can see we added much more context to our query. Uh, just by putting this through some kind of solution I'm going to show you. And now you can see we get context pulled from the documents. Even though our query was kind of the same. And yeah, you can see we get a pretty good answer here. I'm not going to read it, but you can pause and read if you want to. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy how this works out. Th this is, of course, not like a perfect solution. But uh, for me, this has improved uh, the responses a bit, at least in this very small model. I haven't tried it too much. We're going to try it on the 70B model later, uh, this video. But for now, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. So, uh, I think we're just going to head over and try to explain how this works. Because a lot of you enjoyed that in the previous video going a bit deeper into the code and explaining the logic and kind of how this works. So yeah, let's do that. But first, let's say you are one of those that wants to learn more about Python and computer science. Then you should really pay attention to today's sponsor, Brilliant. Have you ever wondered how to make sense of vast amounts of data? Or maybe you're eager to learn coding, but you don't know where to start? Well, Brilliant.org, the sponsor of today's video, is the perfect place to learn these skills. Brilliant is a learning platform that is designed to be uniquely effective. Their interactive lessons in math, programming, AI and data analysis are created by a team of award-winning teachers, professionals and researchers. If you're looking to build a foundation in probability to better understand the likelihood of events, the course Introduction to Probability is a great place to start. You work with real data set from sources like Starbucks, Twitter, Spotify, learning to parse and visualize massive data sets to make them easier to interpret. And for those ready to level up their programming skills, the Creative Coding course is a must You'll get familiar with Python and start building programs on day one, learning essential coding elements like loops, variables, nesting and conditionals. What sets Brilliant apart is that it helps you build critical thinking skills to problem solving, not just memorizing. So while you are getting knowledge on specific topics, you're also becoming a better thinker overall. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash allaboutai or just click the link in the description below. You will also get a 20% of an annual premium subscription. A big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Now let's go back to the project. Okay, so you can see from the code here, these lines here and a few lines down here in our Olama chat function was kind of all I added to try to solve this problem, if you can call it a problem. Uh, but yeah, that was something I wanted to try to do. So uh, I'm just going to explain quickly how this uh, works. Or not quickly, I'm going to go into a bit of a detail. But you can see we have a pretty long prompt here, so I'm gonna blow this up so you can see it better. And then we're gonna move on and kind of go through step by step now how this actually works. 
So yeah, hopefully you can learn something about this. I want to start by explaining how I thought about this prompt we used for this. So uh, basically I'm just going to go through it and explain it so you can see rewrite the following query by incorporating relevant context from the conversation history. So we are actually using bits from our conversation history, the two previous messages to try to improve our query. So the rewritten query should preserve the core intent and meaning of the original query, expand and clarify the query to make it more specific and informative for retrieving relevant context, avoid introducing new topics and queries that deviate from the original query, don't ever answer the original query, but instead focus on rephrasing and expanding it into a new query. Return only the rewritten query text without any additional formatting or explanations. Then we're gonna pass in our context. So we're gonna pass in our true previous messages. Then we're gonna pass in our original query from the user input. And then we are, want our rewritten query as the output, right? And that is kind of how I set this prompt up. So of course this is important. Uh, but we are using some help from JSON here to get the structure output we want. So that is kind of what I wanted to explain to you in this step-by-step -step process here. Okay, so let's start on step one here. So receive user input JSON. The function receives the JSON string containing the user's original query, for example, query. And what does that mean, right? How this is being put into our rewrite query function is in the Olama chat function here. So if we take a look here, so I kind of set this up. So the first query we make to our rag system is not going to have a rewritten query because I found out that that was pretty stupid. We don't need that. But from the second query we put in, everything is going to be rewritten. So you can see here is our function and we are going to pass in this JSON here that comes from this one, right? So you can see we have the user input here. Okay, so in step two here, we're gonna parse the JSON to a dictionary. So the JSON string is converted to a Python dictionary using JSON loads. So this could, for example, be user input equals, and then we have a query. And uh, yeah, the parameter for the query could be, what does this mean? Okay, and then we kind of move on to step three. That is gonna be extracting the original query from this Python dictionary. So let's say we have this as a Python dictionary. Now we kind of want to grab the query, right? So the user input now is equal to, what does that mean? Because we grabbed it from this Python dictionary up here, right? The next step then is gonna be step four, and this is preparing the prompt for the AI model. Our prompt is constructed and includes a conversation history and instruction for rewriting the query. We already took a look at that right up here. So we kind of know how this prompt works. Uh, and you can see in step five, we wanna call our AI model. So in this case, this is Olama running on Llama 3. Uh, it's called with the prepared prompt, the model generates a rewritten version of the query. And if we move on to step six, that is going to be extracting the rewritten query. So the rewritten query extracted from the model's response. If you take a look at the code here, that is going to happen uh, yeah, here, right? So rewritten query, and we have the response from the model, right? We feed in our prompt, and we kind of get this JSON dump rewritten query out. And here we pass in our rewritten query from the response from the model, right? And that is of course gonna be step seven, so return rewritten query in JSON. A new JSON string is constructed containing the rewritten query and return to the calling function. So this could be, for example, rewritten query, right? Like we saw down here, rewritten query. And we can maybe, the parameters is gonna be, what does it mean that Llama 3 has been trained on 15 trillion tokens? And that means that we are ready for kind of our final step and that is going to be to feed this rewritten query back to uh, or to the get relevant context function down in our Olama chat function, right? So you can see rewritten query here. And this is going to be fed back into the get relevant context, right? So if we go down here, you can see we are feeding a relevant query here into the get relevant context function. And we are skipping all together. Uh, the user, the original user input or the original user query is not going to be fed into the relevant uh, context. So we're only going to pass in a rewritten query, right? So you can see the rewritten query is passed to get uh, to the get relevant context function. It's retrieve relevant context from the knowledge vault based on the rewritten query. And that is kind of how I set this up. So uh, like I said, the original user query here uh, is not going to be even consideration 
even though we print it uh, that is just to compare it if we take a look here you can see we print it here but we are not gonna pass it into any functions so we only gonna print it so we can kind of compare them here side by side just for fun I guess so yeah that is kind of how I set this up and so far I'm being pretty happy with it I uh, hope it was uh, okay to kind of understand how this works so it really helps using JSON because that gives us a more deterministic output so we will always kind of get this very structured form and if I tried to use I tried to not use JSON, but that was not a great success, but you can try that if you want to. Uh, but for me, this has been working pretty okay. So this code is gonna be uh, kind of an extension of my the GitHub repo you can see on the screen here, which is the super easy, 100% local uh, Ulama rag. Uh, so we made some updates. Uh, what we updated was we are using the Dolphin 3 Llama model now. Uh, we have an update that uh, we changed our embeddings model, so we are actually using a Ulama embeddings model now. Uh, that has been working out pretty good. We have a few other updates, so we can kind of pick our model from the terminal line if we want to do that. Yeah, just some issues we had that I got on the GitHub that I have implemented. Uh, of course, this is just a, a layout, so you can do whatever you want with this. You can find the link in the description. I'm probably gonna put, put this video up and explaining all the updates to the code here. So this should be, code should be up now so you can start playing around with it. And yeah, I hope you kind of enjoyed it. So I kind of wanted to finish this video by, I created a local rag version here using Grok and the Llama 70B model. Uh, I was supposed to do a video today using Grok and Llama 70B. But I had so many issues with uh, rate limit, so I had to skip it, that might be for Sunday, we will see. But let's just finish up this video by testing this using the Grok and the Lava 70B. So yeah, this is basically exactly the same. Uh, I found that the rewritten queries were a bit better, so let's just try the same questions. So how many tokens? Was this, uh, you can see it's pretty fast though, <laughs> we're running, right? Uh, okay, so let's do, what does that mean? Okay, so let's take a look at the rewritten query here. What does that mean? What does it mean that Llama 3 was trained on enormous data set, uh, equivalent of 2, 2 billion books, with cobbler with 180 tokens? What is the impact mobility? So you can see, yeah, this is a much better rewritten query, right? This is good. So let's see the answer here. Uh, okay, here is a breakdown of what it means. 15 trillion tokens refers to the massive amount of data using, okay. T stands for trillions. Uh, okay, so this is great. Tokens are individual units of text, such as words and characters. The model will train a huge data set. Wow, this is good, right? So we got all of this just by asking, what does this mean? So you can see how actually how good this rewritten query is. And of course, the better model we are going to use, the better answer we are going to get, right? In summary, Llama 3 is a highly, adapt highly advanced language model trained on enormous data set with focus on simplicity, scalability and high quality data. Uh, let's do, wow, that's <laughs> crazy. How many books must a human read to be this smart? <laughs> that's a bad question. Um, what's the equivalent amount of human reading in terms of number of books that would be required to achieve the same length? Understanding knowledge llama tree model train 15 trillion tokens of data again a very good rewritten query if you ask me uh, What a question to put it at scale and it goes into uh, Okay, so let's say To read 330,000 to 600,000 books it would take around 16,500 to 30,000 years assuming one book per week <laughs> Uh, around 15,000 years, assuming two books per week. Of course, this is a rough <laughs> estimate. I'm meant to be humorous. This model is so good. So, yeah, you can see it. We have to read uh, around... How many books was it? 600,000 books to be this smart. So, yeah. Uh, so, I, I think this kind of shows how good this uh, rewritten query kind of is. And yeah, how good the 70B model is. 
So really excited about Llama Tree. I uh, hope you found this enjoyable. Hope you learned something from it. That's the most important thing. The result doesn't matter too much, but maybe this gave you some new ideas how you can use embeddings to kind of improve stuff, how you can use uh, the get rel relevant context function to do other stuff. So yeah. So I guess a lot of you are wondering where I got the 30% better response from. So what I did is I took one response uh, without the rewrite query and I took like a second response with the rewriting query function and I asked the first GPT-4 to compare them and I asked a lot of times and most of the times it came in between 30 and 50% better response than response 1. So response 2 is the one with the rewrite query and I did the same on Opus and here it always landed in 30 40% better than response 1, so response 2 that was with the, uh, uh, yeah, rewrite query function. So, yeah, that is where I got the 37% from. Just want to say, big thank you for the support lately, it's been awesome. And give the GitHub a star if you enjoyed it. Other than that, come back for Sunday, probably gonna do more Grok and Llama 70B, if the rate limit is okay. Have a great week, and I'll see you again, yeah, Sunday.